talk about Project Cars 2. I'm super excited to check this game out and cool. a lot of new cool features I'm sure you're going to tell us about right now. Yeah, exactly. We're excited to be here. Uh, very gracious to be here and be able to show you guys like Project Cars 2, which we've been working on for a while. We announced Project Cars 2 straight after the release of Project Cars 1, in fact. Caused a bit of controversy it there. It did, it did, I remember. But that's fine. We did that because we knew we were on to a dead cert. The fans had helped us make the first game and help us make this amazing game full of all the features that they actually wanted. And therefore, we knew that we were starting something special here. And we had the confidence, therefore, that we had a strong base of the first game and we're going to evolve it and grow even bigger with the second game. And, you know, Project Cars was a great game. It you know, hits that simulation. Uh, you know, you can ex access all the tracks, all the cars straight away, There's, you know, like in, and do different progression systems. Yep. But the one thing that really excites me about the, the new Project Cars 2 is uh, the way you're integrating this new live track 3.0, this... The way the track, you know, the weather, the, the heat of the car, the surface, and it all changes and incorporates into the racing experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's some information out there, you know, from, from other racing games and stuff, and we're here to say that we still have the largest track roster of any racing game out there, more than 50 tracks in the game. And nice. if you remember on Project Cars 1, we already had dynamic time of day and weather yep. two years ago, <laughs> you know? So we have to keep raising the benchmark, yeah? So in Project Cars 2, not only do they all have dynamic time of day and weather, but now they also have seasonal changes too. So you can visit all the tracks in autumn, winter, summer, and spring. You can go to Fuji and you'll see there's more snow on the mountain in the distance, as well as ice and snow on the track itself. And what that means for the player is that every time you go to the track, it's completely different. And the thing that powers all that is this new iteration of our technology called Live Track 3.0, which, again, in our previous game, uh, you know, weather was either on or off, and therefore it made a pretty binary decision for the player. Oh, it's raining. I better go and change my tires. But in Project Cars 2, that weather is now localized. So for a huge track like Nordschleife, where there are clouds that can roll over the circuit, and actually it can be raining on the start-finish straight, but completely dry on the back end, now you've got a situation where the track has got lots of puddles on certain spots of it, and now the more that the cars actually drive over there, it's creating a dynamic driving line. But on other parts of the track, it's completely dry. So it's not as cut and dry. And that's going to change the whole experience of racing game. I, mean, I play a lot exactly. of driving games. I'm a big fan. But you know, you generally say, oh, it's a wet track or it's dry. And you, you kind of get in a, a zone or a mode. This is how I take this corner. This is my braking zone. Yep. With, when it's dynamic. And also stuff can fly onto the track, like it's the sand and the elements. Yep. Like it's all going to completely change and completely change the way you race. That's the other thing, because the live track system now lets us have persistence across all sessions. So if you are in a practice session, you'll start, and the track is gorgeous, pristine, clean, and then over the course of the race weekend, by the time you end up in the, at the end of the race on the Sunday afternoon or wherever it may be, the track has been completely rubbered in. All the bits of rubber from the tires have been impacted back onto the ground. Uh, the gravel that you threw off in the practice session is still there, uh, and it looks like a battle zone. So yeah, that whole persistent stuff is something we didn't have before, and yeah, the competition aren't doing that. Oh, I'm, I'm super excited to check it. I mean, one thing that also excites me is the, the way you're going towards more online championships and yep. even uh, branching out into esports. Yeah, absolutely. So online championships is in response to the fans once again. Like, there are, there are, there are, there are three main areas for this. So on a Saturday night, you and your friends may want to play the game and kind of work out who is the best over the course of that night with a few beers, pizza, that kind of thing. But to keep track of who's winning over sequential races, someone has to literally like count it on their fingers or write it down on a piece of paper or something like that, um, which isn't good. It's, it's fun and everything, but we can do better. Mm. There are also some guys out there who are part of sim racing leagues or run uh, 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 little tournaments themselves. And they are writing, you know, they, you know, they are running these races, but they're also keeping track of the stats either in Excel spreadsheets or on websites, things yeah. like that. We can solve this, yeah? And online championships is the way of doing that. So now you create a schedule of the rounds that you want, where those uh, locations those uh, that, that they're going to be at. You invite your friends in. You assign the cars to them. We now support team-based racing as well. So we can all be on the same team, and the audience out there can be on a different team, and it'll keep track of all the team points and everything. Um, 
So for those guys, it's a fantastic new game mode. And then, yeah, as you allude to there, at the very high end, it means that us ourselves, other big brands out there can actually use this system for create the creation of proper eSport events. It, it sounds really dynamic. I mean, the, the thing is I love about racing games is you can play them over and over again. You just get on the same track, you have fun, beat your lap time. But having this kind of new system of online championships where things are correlated and you can compare and contrast and get information, that's going to make you want to play even more than you normally would. Yeah, the theory is that Project Cars 2 is this huge sandbox. You've got, you can pick any car, you do not need to grind for cash or earn XP or anything. You can play the cover car day one, as soon as you put the disc in the drive. It's all there to play from day Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Choose any track, any weather condition, like it's anytime, anywhere. That's the catchphrase. So how do you maintain accessibility for newcomers, right? So I see a lot of racing games, and there's a lot of you know, games in this genre now that are more focused on open world, pick up and go here and there, where you're like right. confined to the track, which is nice for the true racing fan. But if I'm coming in, and I know there's all these dynamic elements, like the weather, like the way the tire moves, how do you maintain that integral part of saying, all right, if you're brand new to the series, don't be intimidated, you can kind of learn as you come along. Yeah, so I mean, that's something we've learned over the course of the last game to this one. In the previous game, we gave you tons of features and options and sliders and stuff, and actually it might have been a bit too intimidating. So our ethos going in with this one is, like you're alluding to there, we want to give you the full experience, the full hardcore sim experience, but we're also going to make it more accessible. So the whole user interface has been over overhauled. So things, uh, all the detail is there, but at a core level, you choose your track, you choose your car, you press start, and off you go into the actual race. But for those guys who want the advanced settings, they want to set up their wheel with a force feedback, they want to set up their triple screen monitors with vertical offset and the bezel size and all that kind of stuff, it's all there, but it's not as kind of in your face and right. overwhelming as it was in the first game. Yeah. And that's really good because you know often when you play a racing game, you might want to just you know drop in, have a couple of laps before dinner or before you go out for a night. And sometimes you might want to have the three monitor set up with your seat and do an online championship. And and and, and whatever way you partake in it, you're going to have that immediacy of the dynamic racing system that, yeah. that it's coming for. Um, you know, it's be coming out all three systems, PlayStation 4, Xbox yeah. One, and PC. Is there a release date yet? Or Yeah, so it's September 22nd. And uh, the core thing to stress here is that the, you're getting the same game on all platforms. And uh, the game, you know, can be used at the high level. Like, please come and play our game on the Namco booth uh, on the CXC motion rig with VR and 12K oh triple goodness. screen, right? What? Yep, that game. 12K, that's more Ks than I can imagine. Yeah, you know, and so there are professional racing drivers out there who are using that game as training for their real life careers. It's that it's that good and that, you know, realistic that you can learn yeah. real life driving. Mechanics. But it's still the same game that you'll be playing on PlayStation 4 with your feet up, with a controller, having an amazing time. And then the, the ability to, you know, appeal to those both ends of the market and that, that broad spectrum must be a very it, difficult thing to do, you know. It must be one thing, you know, for, you know, average Joe just wants to go around a track and drive fast, but to be able to actually appeal to people that know racing, that know driving lines, that know the feel of a the temperature of the tires or how that friction is going to affect that corner, that's, that's going to be even more fun for, for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we go for pure authenticity on this stuff. Uh, like when we uh, laser scan all our new tracks that are going into the game, nowadays we actually uh, fly drones over the city. Oh. Uh, so, for example, Long Beach, you know, we flew drones over there and uh, we get all the extra detail in there because when the re real racing drivers tell us that they don't just use the bits on the track to gauge breaking points, they use things like buildings, trees, yep. all that kind of stuff. So we put all that detail in there. And it's, and it's for the benefit of all players. Oh, well, I'm super excited to check it. Thank you for sharing the information about the game today. Is there a website anyone can check out or a Twitter? Yeah, check projectcarsgame.com, projectcarsesports.com for esports-related stuff. Uh, check all our social channels, projectcarsgame.com. Awesome. Thank you very much, and all the best with the release. And thank you, everyone, for joining us so far here at E3 2017.